What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Give it up for the motherfucking king of Macedonia, Alec Matrivsky in, well, virtually in the flesh. We are going to be doing a reaction video to Decca, the ultimate guide by Dave Palumbo at RX Muscle. So, Decca is one of Alex's favorite compounds. Alex stands behind Decca a lot. I'm gonna have Andrew throw up a picture of Alex's transformation with Decca. Alex, what can you tell me about Decca, and what are we observing with this reaction that you want to weigh in on against the guru from RX Muscle, Dave Palumbo? Well, I'd like to see his points and then, you know, uh, interject if there's, you know, something I want to add. But from my perspective and from like what's essentially being uh, presented in the literature and in practice is that Nandrolone is uh, an extremely favorable uh, antigen because of, of the anabolic antigenic ratio. So in, it's in the essentially it's in the word a anabolic antigenic steroids implies that antigens bind to the antigen receptor and mediate a uh, transcription that directly influences uh, muscle protein synthesis. So in this situation, we want to have favorable outcome and pick the most anabolic substance that we can. And from um, an ang androgenic standpoint, um, the, the higher the androgenicity, usually, the higher the binding affinity for the air, but that, that does not necessarily mean that that would make better gains. It may lead to better neurological and uh, nervous system gains and more strength gains, but also that brings a lot of side effects to the table and not necessarily always more anabolism. So that's why an androlone, it sucks for like strength gains, especially if it's not uh, utilized with other androgens like testosterone or you know, or TRAN or uh, DHT drugs, but the the sheer anabolism of it, uh, it's mind blowing. And people back in the 80s, 90s, uh, I mean, DECA was, uh, they had it pharmaceutical grade and uh, people did not need a lot of it in order to really facilitate uh, solid gains. So basically what you're saying is all the people blasting TREN in their off season and using tests is like, Stupid, you want to use a more anabolic compound such as NPP or DECA. I will point out with my personal experiences with NPP or DECA, I do notice, you know, a mood difference of going on, mm -hmm. you know, a substantial dose, like a muscle building dose of NPP or DECA. And that the other caveat side effect that I would like to throw out for Alec to elaborate on is the impact on the heart and progesterone. Okay, so first of all, your mood, and this goes uh, for, you know, people really talk about this issue and they assume that it's prolactin mediated. Well, if you look up the studies on Andrelon as standalone, it basically lowered prolactin in subjects relative to baseline. The thing is that prolactin gets elevated usually almost always in conjunction with estrogen. Now here's the problem, and here's what people don't understand, is that Nandrolone, 90 nor testosterone, even though it has a very low aromatization conversion, so like it does not create a lot of E2 or estradiol, the synthetic progestins of Nandrolone acts as ligands to the estrogen receptor alpha and mediate a transcription very similar to estradiol. So in other words, it, it directly uh, 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 mediates an effect uh, the exact same as estradiol. Now, people have different, you know, uh, uh, genetic polymorphisms, different metabolism, and they create these synthetic metabolites at a different rate, and they respond to them differently. So some people can get gyno, even on DECA only, for example, but that's way less likely than if you were to pair it with higher doses of testosterone and shoot up your estradiol. So when you have both stimulation of progesterone and estradiol, you, like prolactin would shoot up and all this clusterfuck will happen. So this is why, you know, people get side effects and the, the whole point is to mit mitigate those. 
So you want to utilize basically no other or a very little uh, aromatizing androgen and in conjunction with nandrolon. Uh, if that's the best bang for your buck, both from a muscle building perspective and also both from, from a side effect perspective. And when you mentioned the trend thing, like it's extremely stupid to bulk on on high um, in a high androgenic environment mm -hmm. because especially at first so like when you start your cycle let's say your oxygen you're bulking right mm -hmm. so if you start off with tran with uh test with uh anadrol usually as a kickstart what happens is you jack up myostatin so so fast so quickly that you're gonna hit a brick wall very soon rather than later so like, what you can do is someone just simple basic watching it's, it's it's basically an inhibitory protein that prevents the body from uh building excess amount of muscle because muscle is uh, more uh metabolic so like than fat tissue stopping factor yes okay. yes exactly so it's a it's a brain mm. so um the body does not necessarily want to build muscle mm -hmm. you know so that's the thing and in situations like this it's better to start off with low androgenic higher anabolic uh, uh, compounds and then towards the end of the cycle if you like if it's warranted i don't recommend this because when you're also gaining a lot of weight you're in a very unfavorable uh, uh situation from a health perspective your blood pressure will be elevated relative to baseline your heart rate would be elevated relative to baseline. Uh, lipids would be off regardless because you're on uh, androgens. So like that's a very bad environment to be from, you know, for your heart, for your kidneys and, and so forth. So like if you do trend on top of that and, you know, harsh androgens, you're just gonna risk a lot of side effects, potentially even, you know, uh, you know, having a heart attack or, so, or something. Uh, but if you do decide to do that, you want to do that towards the end of the cycle and then just capitalize the gains and not be afraid of, you know, jacking myostatin up too quickly so you can have like better, better uh, uh, linear gains. All right, that's a quick layout. Like I said, follow Blunt Biohacking. Blunt Biohacking will be linked below. This is our full hour to two hour long discussions where you know, I poke Alec along and exert all the information out of him and try and dumb him down as much as possible. But I want to get bit, get into this video. So, Alec, you linked me this video of Dave Palumbo, and I've been on Dave Palumbo's channel um, one or two times. And I'm a fan of Dave. Dave is one of the pioneers. You know, he almost has a full medical degree. Why did this DECA video strike you to a point where you're messaging me to, you know, put your two cents in on it? Well, first of all, I messaged you before I even watched it because I think it's a it's an interesting subject. It's relevant. Um, it's made by a big channel, relatively big channel. So I think it's it's warranted to make a reaction videos. You know, people make reaction videos on on absolute cheat content. So might as well you know be educational and see whether my opinion uh, would match Dave's. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I've I've seen actually, because I watched you know. Um, a few segments um there was quite a lot of misinformation essentially now i don't know if whether you want me to you know talk based we're, on we're, just memory no, we're gonna go through or we can we're gonna go through it right now yeah i'll, I'll get to the meat and potatoes okay all right so this is on dave palumbo's i will link the video below i will get oh my through, god uh, whatever <laughs> What the fuck? Um, all right, Dave. Dave's getting into some kinky advertisements. Um, buy your fiber lies, guys. Um, don't ship bricks. All right, here we go. Here's Dave. At any time, Alec, just tell me to hit pause. Dave Palumbo here with another RX Muscle Supplement and Science Review. Today I'm going to be talking about the anabolic steroid Decadurabolin, aka Nandurone Decanoate. And it's probably one of my favorite anabolic steroids. I'm going to roll 1.5 times speed. Mm-hmm. Remember, you're the guy who works with the good body, the guy. You know, I don't know how we got to talk about anabolic Go 1.25. 
slowing them down to one, two, two, five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and more I, accurate. We got a car and I drove him down there and we picked it up. And that was the first first drug I really used ever. It was uh, Nandrol and Decanaway. That's what it was, uh, the generic form of it. Uh, but it was right from an American pharmacy. And I believe I was using 200 milligrams a week and stuff. And what I noticed right off the bat, the first thing I can remember was that I had tremendous pumps after about two to three weeks of this stuff. Meaning my blood volume increased quite a bit. Uh, my joints felt really good. I, I had had a... Um, Pause, pause for a bit. Every time I would do, I was... uh, the blood volume that he's talking about, it's more so mediated through uh, intracellular water retention. So, like, he has more blood volume, like, but it's not necessarily from a sheer uh, increased red blood cell count. Uh, Nandrolone does that, obviously, just like, a, you know, every androgen, but it's not uh, something like to the degree of boldenone or even testosterone. Like I've seen people on, on low doses of TRT go po uh, polycythemic. So nandrolone is uh, uh, relatively safe in that regard. Right, Kieran? He's 100% natural. And then, once again, I had done legs and I was getting like rubbing. I even took this, for me, which was crazy. It took like two, three months off the training leg and it just didn't go away. And I was. Uh, you know, I really you know, wanted to do a cycle, and I didn't know if I was going to waste it because I wasn't able to train legs. And I started taking the deca, uh, and within three. So weeks, I have a question for you, Alec, on him like bringing up like how he, like, highlights that his knee got better. I recently made a video discussing like very minuscule deca therapy on top of TRT HRT for joints, and I got some I got right. some blowback on that of basically like. That's essentially like a band-aid for the pain and not like really the root cause of the joint pain. Okay, so I think you should you should let him speak up a, 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 a bit more and I'll tell you to pause and interject. I don't know if it was because um, the muscle started to grow and support my knee joint better or pause. the inflammatory effect that I was told that the Ravlin had. Probably so, okay. First of all, if you add more muscle mass to that, you know, area, you're increasing the pressure. Uh, it's not mediated for just gaining more muscle mass. If anything, it would make make it even worse. Then he says, uh, uh, from an anti-inflammatory standpoint, uh, essentially he's right, but not, but not to, but but also not right. So Nandrolone in studies actually. Uh, potentiates the formation of pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha and attenuates the formation uh, of uh, anti-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-10. So it's, that's why it's also more uh, cardiotoxic than say testosterone. Uh, on the other hand, the anti-inflammatory uh, uh, thing that he's talking about, like why does it relieve joint pain, is very similar to, I don't know whether you're aware, but like doctors inject hyaluronic acid into uh, joints. And basically the fluid retention uh, around that area, because hyaluronic acid pulls mm -hmm. 5,000 times the molecular weight, it, the water itself causes an anti-inflammatory effect. And Nandrolone really does pull fluid around the joint, lubricates it, so you have an acute cu cushing essentially, mm -hmm. right? Plus you have an inflammatory effect and better leverage. So like those are all of the things that you want, especially when you're training, right? Because like if you have if you have uh, sore joints and you know you're dry and like you're gonna probably get injured. So that's why uh, uh and as far as what you said it's not um fixing the root cause the issue well usually the issue is, is just chronic uh, uh infl inflammation people also like get uh, te uh tendonitis like chronic tendonitis so w how would you fix that you know you're just gonna stop lifting and like no so in this essence you want to have a band-aid and train smart and avoid pain. So if you, if that helps you do that, rather than taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or corticosteroids, then you're you're basically doing uh, what you should be, right? Because I, I see people, you know, take painkillers and anti-inflammatory drugs and they fuck up their kidneys and their blood. Because like non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, for example, they inhibit both COX-1 and 2 and 
the uh, we need coax one for you know our gut lining and also for platelet form formation and that's why people can get internal bleedings and other problems so especially when you're lifting a lot of weight like uh, it's just stupid like so nandrolone for this in this situation is actually you know warranted uh, as far as collagen synthesis uh, which i think he will talk about next uh play it let's hear what he has to say but there's no denying the fact that all the antibiotic steroids on the market decades of Ravelin has a very unique anti-inflammatory effect now some people I, i've read you know I, I try to read what's going on in the internet you know, really research and hmm. a lot of that tech obviously what from the farms here pretty much purchased it from everywhere mexico spain and what a lot of people believe is that you know deca actually increases collagen synthesis in the joints and i don't think that's the case because anabolic steroids really don't work on collagen much stop it they're really specific to muscle. nope they're not sarms and even sarms are not just selected to muscle um uh, deca actually increases collagen synthesis anavar is being prescribed for people that are burn patients so like steroids for sure you know uh uh, uh potentiate uh potentiate uh, collagen synthesis what you, what's really interesting though is that there was a study where they compared different steroids and boldenone actually had a significant higher uh rate of increasing collagen synthesis and it was like 360 versus 270 uh, which was nandrolone so from a collagen synthesis perspective uh eq or boldenone actually outperformed uh deca but i believe that deca has a, a tremendous anti-inflammatory effect similar to, to what cortisol would have on, on, on a journal you know when you take practice on the deca, cortisol basically um you get that anti-inflammation effect and a lot of the speculation is that deca might actually bind to you know cortisol receptors or at least have some sort of configuration that's similar to cortisone and can stimulate those receptors you know causing anti-inflammation Whatever the case may be, oh my God. DECA absolutely makes feel better. It also happens to be a really good anabolic uh, drug. And a lot of people combine, you know, try to compare it to testosterone, and they say, well, it's, it's, it's more anabolic than, than testosterone. This is oh my God, anabolic. stop. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Wait, should we let him say why it's not the case? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's why, see what, if he says that. not the case? Yeah. Drug. What happens is with DECA is they remove some of the antigenic components, you know, the side effect components, basically. The stuff that causes, you know, masculinizing side effects. How did they remove it? They removed effects of DECA. They made a more anabolic drug. So in, in you compare the ratio of the anabolic or muscle building effect to the androgenic effect, it's more anabolic. But not, if you want to quantify how anabolic it really is, it's still less than that. No, it's not less. But, but, but when you stack it with testosterone, it works. Really Stop well. it. Have a really nice synergy. Jesus. <laughs> first, <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Okay, so first of all, uh, nandrolone is absolutely more anabolic than testosterone. Like 600 nandrolone versus testosterone. nandrolone if that was the case? Yeah, the whole point of synthesizing new steroids, new PEDs, is to out outperform testosterone. Testosterone was the godfather, you know, the basic, uh, the base molecule, and then the whole idea is to find it's something new and better. And Nandrolone really that did that. Now they, they, when he says they made it uh, less androgenic. No, so like Nandrolone, first of all, it's a bioidentical. He doesn't say that. Like, it's not a s synthetic drug. We have Nandrolone in our body naturally, but to a very small uh, uh, degree. Now, Nandrolone converts to DHN, which is dihydronandrolone, via the 5 alpha reductase enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT. Mm -hmm. And DHN is significantly less androgenic than DHT, testosterone, and Nandrolone. For, for someone now, basic, that basically means like. For hair loss, DECA's way better at mitigating not hair only, loss. Not only hair loss, hair loss, acne. Even though acne can be mitigated through uh, imbalances in uh, estrogen signaling, and if you circle back to what I said about the syn synthetic progestins, some people can have uh, you know some acne issues if estro estradiol is you know somewhat elevated, as in the uh, case if you pair it with testosterone 
so that's not what you want to do but like not only acne also virilization uh like even women like uh deepening of the voice so when we're talking androgenicity we're talking about all of the androgenic side effects of steroids so in essence nandrolone is by far the safest commercially available uh, uh androgen uh with a better uh, anabolic effect than testosterone now people speculate online and this is like there's a study where uh they compare nandrolone to dhn which is the byproduct and people think and th this is like a misconception that if you pair nandrolone with uh finasteride or dutasteride which are five alpha reductase inhibitors um that you're basically gonna lose all your hair and you're gonna be hyper androgenic and all that well yes you'll be more androgenic because dhn is less androgenic than nandrolone but only 10% of testosterone gets converted to DHT. How many percentages actually of nandrolones are converted to, to DHN? I would say probably around the same. So if you shoot a gram of DECA and you're on finasteride or dutasteride, for instance, uh, you'll still have a fuck ton of nandrolone in your system, mm -hmm. you know? So if it was that, you know, bad and people would lose hair and get acne and get all these horrible effects, then we'd know. So I have a lot of clients who are chronically on the test, right? And they cannot stop because the half-life is like fucking six months and it can be in your system all the way up to a year. So like if you want to do an nandrolone cycle or a cycle including nandrolone, uh, with nandrolone included, you'd have to stop like and time it for next year, for instance, mm. right? And also depending how long you've been on the drug, because, you know, it has a buildup effect. Mm. So, so I've, I've, I've did it personally myself and a lot of clients have just d uh, done uh, an angel and solo cycles with a uh, DHT inhibitor like that's right. And nobody has reported an increase of hair loss or shedding like nothing. Um, so I just threw that in. I don't know whether he will talk about it. I doubt it, but uh, I think it's relevant since we're talking about DECA. Um, for whatever reason, you know, um, I think personally that the joint relief, combined with the fact that DECA is anabolic, combined with the fact that we know when you put two drugs together called stacking, you get a synergistic effect. They enhance each other more what? than just one plus one equals two. It's like one plus one equals five. And you get a really good effect. And a lot of people have done their first cycle of testosterone and Decker and gotten really good stuff. Because if you can train, take three I've never three. seen any literature suggesting that pairing androgens have any uh, uh, potential effects one another. Like it, it doesn't necessarily. Like how would it impact pharmacodynamics? which is like how the drug affects the body relative to plasma concentration. Now you're raising your overall androgenic load, so of course yeah, you have it, better results probably come taking under that two angle drugs. Of the overall androgenic yeah. load. Yeah, so he's, but he says that they have some fucking, I don't know, weird interaction, you know, that boosts each, each other effects, which is, uh, you know, just not, not the case. Yeah, let's, let's hear it. And recover better, okay? You're, you're, you're going to make better gain times. Now, dosages have been debated over the years. Personally, you know, back in the day, 200 milligrams to 400 milligrams, milligrams would be the recommended dosage, with 400 being seeming to be the sweet spot. To me, you have fully dosed DECA, you know, which in today's marketplace may or may not be true. Um, the, obviously, with the prevailing amount of underground steroids that out there make it crap to test. Now, the good thing is that, you know, if you've seen any of the Roy test kits that I saw, the plug. .com, you can test DECA and mm -hmm. see if it's really DECA. And then you can actually take, buy another kit, which is called the semi-quantitative test. And you can tell if the DECA is, is really dosed properly. It will actually be dosed how much is in there. So that's a really good, you know, tool now that people can use to see if they're using fully dosed DECA. But if you are using fully dosed DECA, 400 milligrams per week work really, really nice, you know, with 500 being probably the sweet spot. He just said it's you know, 400. Like, yeah, he just like jumped it up 100 mg. So if you're a real big, yeah. big boy, 500. <laughs> if you're like some dweeb watching this video, stop at 400. But for all the mass monsters right. watching me, like 500, I, don't shoot me. Right. Because I think a lot of this stuff. Well, can you, can you? Uh -huh. really, that used to be two, um, two vials and stuff. The American deck of Rabble from Organon came in, in a little vial with two ML, each ML with two milligrams. Two milligrams out of each vial, and we would pop a whole vial each week. And, and Stop us, one sec. 
Um, the anti-inflammation effect. Uh, I think that organon is not a USA uh, pharmacy or rather company. I think it is somewhere. Let let's let me see. Let's see. Oh. International. It's from fucking where? Based in Oz. Where's that? A U S Australia. I don't know what it says. Oz, probably, probably that. Yeah. A U S would be Australia. Yeah. Mhm. Mm oh, well, continue right. on. Continue but, on. No. Yeah. If you feel benefit from that, from taking the really fifty milligrams, so you don't need a lot of deca to get the anti inflammation effect, but you need more if you want to get the muscle holding along. Now, the more DAC you take, the more oh, side effects you get. Now, while DAC does not aromatize very easily, actually, it does, but it's I would say it's probably twenty percent less than testosterone. No. Yes. So you do absolutely need to take an estrogen blocking agent like an or a Camaro as well. But DAC can also, in high doses, just convert to prolactin or at least induce high Stop. prolactin levels. How it Sure. It doesn't convert to prolactin. There's no such conversion. Uh, basically, in the presence of elevated estrogen, prolactin tends to follow. There are a lot of studies, even on testosterone, Basically. without AIs, and it causes an increase in TRT patients of prolactin. So it's not the Nandrolone's fault. It's basically you using it's, testosterone it's in stack. conjunction. The stack. It's the stack. The multitude. Yeah, that's, that has a stack in it. The fucking tornado <laughs> yeah. synergy. Like, I and say this a lot. Like, if you're going to go with DECA, you should use as little test as possible. And, like, keep, yes. that, keep that, like, variable out of there. And, oh, my God, do they get angry. They're like, you should be using just as much test, if not more tests than DECA. And it's like... Double. It's two to one ratio on the bro form forums. Um, and also, uh, speaking of prolactin, it's actually down-regulating dopamine transmission. So like it can really make you depressed and you know all of all, uh, 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 fuck with your uh, uh, libido in a way like when we come dopamine is being produced and uh, then prolactin shoots up in order to attenuate you going again and that's like a safe switch for the body to stop hyper uh, um, basically uh, hyper mating essentially like to. Uh, to attain it, you know, God, for you to do a, you to have like keep a lot busting of busting and busting and busting. Yeah, that's why yeah. you take so that caber and you go back in there and rail yeah. her for like five times in a row. Exactly. So that's why people, you know, tend to bitch about deca dig. Uh, usually, it's, again, the combination of having high elevated estrogen plus the syn synthetic progestins that also right. uh, uh, transcript estrogen-like effect plus the prolactin as a consequence to this, you know, cascade. And that's why people have problems. Uh, but there's no direct conversion of DECA to prolactin. Like, that's silly. And Alec had me on high dosage MPP, which is short ester DECA, to rebuild my physique at 230. And people were DMing me like, oh, your dick probably stopped yeah. working. In reality, my erections uh -huh. were great, but I kept my test yep. super low. But my erections were yeah. amazing. So, yep. It, it really comes down to just don't use that much test with it. If you want to scale the deca, scale the deca. But like, the testosterone exactly. is kind of what he's hinting at here. Yep. It does increase the lactin, and in some people, it increases the lactin a lot more than in, in other people. And when you have high prolactin levels in your body, what what happens? Well. If you experience this, you can have erection problems, maintaining erections, because hypolactin inhibits erections in men. Um, a lot of guys have, you know, they don't have necessarily low sex drive, but they just they can't finish the act, or they have trouble while they're having sex, you know, maintaining an erection, and that's going to be that could be mentally, you know, very game very over. Obviously, if you have a girlfriend or wife. Now, the other thing that can happen from hypolactin levels is you can get a, a form of anticholinergia known as prolactin and dyslipidemia. The glands he do get swollen. He needs some milk. Yeah, so. 
here's the thing as far as you know this uh, installation um, there's no such thing as prolactin induced gyno like that's that's a bro for a myth that I, I've I, even I, used I thought that, that so I thought that was real like I thought like the way to tell prolactin induced gyno and regular gyno is if like the nips are lactating like crazy then that's that's prolactin induced mm -hmm. that was my bro science no no the thing is that uh prolactin gets elevated in the in the in the presence of increased uh, uh, uh estrogenic signaling like it's not a if you have a pituitary tumor for example that causes like hyperprolactinemia then you may have lactation um but in in, in leaky nipples and discharge and you make you know uh, a thing that that's prolactin in this gyno where you're just having uh, a fluid secreting out of your nipples but uh, from a, from a perspective of um, uh, actually having gynecomastia of, of, from prolactin uh, it, it cannot happen unless there's either a stimulatory effect uh, at the at the estrogen receptor and also progesterone so you know that's that's also a, a big myth that it, it, it's like from 2002 or something like that i remember reading it on um, a, a lot of forums when they respond to estrogen the same way but they can actually start secreting a mucus like yeah. secretion and you know whereas that doesn't happen when you have high estrogen high estrogen estrogen induced gynecomastia just makes the gland tissue grow and get bigger but it doesn't cause any kind of a secretion or you know uh, a, a, any kind of a discharge out of the gland whereas the prolactin will so if you have a something that is coming out of the gland you can probably get your bottom dollar that is prolactin induced versus estrogen induced that doesn't mean that you should need jerk take a prolactin inhibitor like the or or bromocryptine just because you're taking deca because you know unless you're having serious side effects from it that's not something you want to just uh okay so basically when just think of it like this when people when women have breast cancer are they put on caber or on serms like which hormone serms yeah exactly so it's the estrogen the main mediator of it is estrogen and it's potentiated by by igf1 progesterone right. and prolactin like those yeah. they have you similar gotta, effects yeah but you have to have the main mediator right. for glandular tissue formation so yeah for those watching like just choke the estrogen out just just start choking the estrogen out <laughs> that's what's feeding the prolactin conversion anyways like i have dudes like oh i'm gonna take the prolactin i'm like you're probably on a gram of test too so yep. you know just being fed that just think of like People are like, oh, the more tests I take, the bigger I get. The more tests you take, the more conversion to DHT and estrogen you have, and the more you're adding in ancillary compounds to try and control it. N not only that, uh, what's interesting is that also people that are, they add like MK677 or growth hormone, well, IGF-1 even, even further potentiates the whole cascade. So, you know, people may st do DECA plus test plus GH or MK, and that's like a recipe for gyno. Throw in there, knee jerk, there's thoughts. Um, I know a lot of guys that will go for blood work to check their estrogen, you know, their testosterone levels and their prolactin levels to see if there is an issue. If you're one of these people that looks at a vial of DECA and you, you, you know, you can't get an erection, I would just avoid the drug completely. Uh, really or sensitive. lower the test. But, or just you know, lower the test. Work, I never had any problems whatsoever. And uh, I, while I never really had my prolactin levels checked, that's, that's something that we did back then. I have a feeling they weren't high. If they would have been high, I would have had discharge. They would have had, you know, the erection issue. They probably that. didn't hey, blast test along, Deco. You exactly. never had the <laughs> issue. That drug is an excellent drug. It's clean. Stop it for a bit. That when, 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 I'll just use my country as a reference, and this goes for the whole Balkans and probably most of Europe and what happened in the States and Mexico, even still, when 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 a bodybuilder would enter a, a pharmacy and ask for steroids like nandrol is a is a quote-unquote steroid that's you know artificially like they, they, they associate testosterone with trt with hormone replacement and nandrolone as as steroids and primo so like back in the day when 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 they got steroids it was deca primo and uh it's at one point Debo. 
So a lot of, you know, back in the 80s, 90s, they didn't use testosterone or, or you know, a very small uh, amount. Because as you can tell, uh, pharmacy, pharmacies produce uh, a low milligrams per milliliter and also ampules. So like they, they would do just a few ampules per week, which is nothing compared to today's dose that is uh, utilized by, by everybody. Right. If you're not doing a gram, you're not even doing steroids, Alec. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on. There was a dark ester, which means it releases slowly and steadily into the bloodstream. Matter of fact, if you took a shot today, in three weeks, you still probably have some functional uh, DECA in your system. It would be doing something. Uh, DECA also does very long metabolites. Now, the metabolites don't mean the drug is still working, but it means it can be detected in your bloodstream for sometimes up to three months. So if you're getting drug tested, it's probably not a good right. drug to use. Um, a lot of people ask me about the, the shorter acting or faster acting version of DECA, or, DECA, or just is known as durabilin or nandrolone phenylpropionate which is a faster-acting ester of DECA. The problem with that is it's, it's, it's a pretty good drug. You know, I prefer the long-acting one, but it doesn't have the anti What? How? Stop. Yeah, what? Just this makes zero Wait, sense. It's the same explain, drug, different ester. explain it? No, I don't know. I haven't watched it. So put, put it yeah, on. Maybe. Let's hear it. Some people say it has a little bit, but I, I never noticed any anti-inflammation effects. So if you're looking for that, the benefits of DECA, you know, you're not going to get it from the, uh, the nandrolone. You no know, inclination or explanation on why the esterification changes the dynamics of what he felt? Uh, no, unless he used like a, a stupid, like 50 milligrams. Yeah, you must have uh, not dosed it high enough because when I dose it at 600 to 800 Jesus. a week, yeah, it feels like you're I'm on blown Deca. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's if anything, you would feel it more because right. like you're it's getting rapid like a spikes. Shotgun, right? Exactly, exactly. So it, this is like completely false. But uh, based off of uh, you know literature, using a longer ester tends to have a greater effect at uh, IGF one uh, uh, synthesis. So usually if you were to do like uh, 800 mix of NPP versus nandrolone, I assume due to its uh, a very long ester and compounding effect, um, it has a better turnover uh, and IGF, uh, IGF-1 uh, stimuli. But this is not like stupid uh, statistically significant, but just throwing it out there, you know, for people that wanna look it up. And that's something to consider. Also, a lot of people as well, the fast action version is something that women can take and not get side effects, and that's not true. What? DECA and the uh, one form of it, um, the fast action, both have side effects that women do not want. Okay. Before, like any steroid. Voice deepening, get hair growth, and it, once again, because DECA is a slower acting drug, you might not notice it right at first, but it's going to happen. It's a human effect. So that's not something that women really should consider taking. That's important. Need to put that out there because I, I do know a lot of women that do take it. They like the way they feel in it because they grow and obviously they're good joint relief. Stop. I'm telling you, long term. Like if we if we started the whole discussion that it has a very favorable anabolic dendrogenic ratio, that would imply that it's like actually one of the best drugs for women, if anything. Right. Like You're just, avoiding the hypermasculinization effects for everyone not knowing what Alec yeah. is saying. Like androgenic hypermasculinization effects, like trend anabolic yeah. just muscle growth not very masculine npp deca right yeah so they're all like we're talking about androgens they are like uh keys that you know go into a keyhole and once they are in they basically unlock a transcription that facilitates something in the body and in this situation would be uh one of the factors would be uh, uh muscle protein synthesis so where you want to if your goal is optimizing uh, muscle the muscle building effect you want to utilize androgens that are not inherently very androgenic but have a high efficacy as far as meeting a transcription that causes a, 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 a high an anabolic effect because we're after the anabolism we want tissue gains if you're androgenic then like for example halo testing halo is like inherently one of the most androgenic compounds and it sucks as an anabolic. You're, you're not gonna grow for shit right. on on halo testing, right? But you'll get stu stupid strong. Right. So so that's the trade-off, you know. Uh, and also circling back for women, actually, I know a lot of women that use 
a low dose of uh, of nandrolone, both uh, as NPP and DECA, and they they're those are the ones that I don't see, you know, weird as you know, uh, fa facial structures and acne and all that shit. So it's quite opposite. It's really a, a, a male drug regimen. Now the question is, a lot of people use it off-season to put on masks, but can it be used pre-contest? And I say, yeah, I don't use it like the last six to eight weeks before a show, but I do use it in the first part of the contest diet because I think, you know, as you start reducing carbohydrates, it seems like you both, your body's not both agree on this. A lot of times the joints become vulnerable. Yeah, I agree with this. Yeah. And that's during that time period because it will actually help It'll make the joints feel like they're more lubricated because from that anti-inflammation effect that it has. So it's, it's, it's a nice drug to start out the first six to eight weeks of the contest prep with because you're going to feel better and you're going to be strong. You're not going One to second, so. And the joints will feel better. Obviously, anti-inflammatory effects, the, the, they do not uh, 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 lubricate joints. Like, those are not the same things. You know, he just described water retention, essentially, around the joint. Uh, that downstream also causes an anti-inflammatory effect, but it's not anti-inflammation. Otherwise, uh, fucking aspirin would, you know, lubricate your joints, where it doesn't. Once you get into that last six to eight weeks, it doesn't even matter anymore because, you know, now you're in the stretch. So, I like to use the great contest. I also like I agree with this. I like to cycle it every eight weeks. I you know, if you use it for too long of a period of time, it loses some of its effectiveness as an anabolic agent. Um, but if you're looking for just anti-inflammation effects from it, you're pretty safe to keep doing it all the time. I mean, I, I remember when I um, tore my quad. I would interject on that and say it's dosage dependent. I mean, you really got to watch what level of DECA you're just cruising on in death. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Long-term heart I, health. I would not take that yes. advice. I mean, you yeah. got to know when you so, use well, DECA, you're like, you're building some fucking mass and then you're getting off it and harm mitigating that. Exactly. Yeah. I was on hormone replacement. Uh, I was on a 200 milligram testosterone. This is why he doesn't have the DECA side effects because he actually does low test yeah. on DECA. It's funny. Just for the anti inflammation effect, it worked pretty effectively. I did that for eight weeks of my, uh, you know, every time I had quad surgery, and it seemed to really help quite a bit. So that's something that you might want to consider if you're rehabbing them. So, I'm sorry, my OCD is killing me. Like, whoever's shooting Dave Palumbo, like, put his products on center. Like, just bothering me the whole time that like he's trying to advertise species and I can't even read his titles. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Out there. Safest, it is long after What's it? Any liver toxicity whatsoever. It's like, it's uh, okay. Uh, he said that it is actually this one of the safest, but yeah, it doesn't recommend it for women. Like, uh, and I I know what he recommends for women. It's usually Primo or Var, which are actually very bad. In this instance, Primo especially, like VAR, yeah, I can Primo. see. I'm being honest. Primo is like bad, bad. So I'd rather see a it's woman go with Deca over Primo. That's just me. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Let's uh, carry on. And as long as you're not really sensitive and it doesn't raise your prolactin levels too high, where you're going to be getting erection issues or you're going to be getting, you know, um, gynecomastia from it. I think there's, you know, it's a it's a drug that you can reliably use and get excellent results from. It also has a really good way of, it's kind of like EQ in the sense that it definitely pumps up your red blood cell count, um, which I think is a good thing. A lot of people say get scared when they see high red blood cell count and they're ready to go give blood at, you know, at the drop of a dime. If you're if you're hemoglobin and hematocrit red blood cells are not through the roof, it's good to have higher levels because I mean, actually, you got the, the cyclists and all the athletes, the endurance athletes, they want high red blood cell count. Why? Because they get better oxygen carrying capacity in the muscles and they can train harder. So, uh, slightly high red blood cell count, stop. I don't talk about it. It's not necessarily. You, bad usually, thing. people freak out when they're actually high, like when they're above scale, above reference range. Because, like, if you, if you get dehydrated and your blood viscosity is, uh, you know, inherently very uh, 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 high then you're risking a heart attack especially you know you know or, or a clot especially especially for people um, so I see people take vitamin uh, K a lot of vitamin K2 um, on deca on high doses of deca um, and the issue is that 
that would also exacerbate the potential uh, it would lower the the prothrombotic time and that essentially causes higher instances of coagulation but on the other end of the spectrum it lowers intracellular calcium deposit so it's a trade-off but that's essentially whether somebody gets the 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 polycythemic effect greatly from mandrolon or not if they don't then utilizing you know high doses of well not high normal doses of k2 it's 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 uh, okay but uh, if they are prone to that i, I wouldn't and the one more thing i'll weigh in is like the bigger your muscles are the more the water demand so I don't even like exactly. when people make fun of all oh, that, that douchebag carrying around the gallon jug like that douchebag so juiced up and has so much muscle tissue he legit needs a gallon jug to feed all that exactly. muscle water to stop exactly what Alec just stated. Yep. And the levels are just through the crazy through the roof, you know. But I wouldn't be do donating blood just because you're getting a little boost in red blood cells. It's normally not a little boost. Just because you're on a cycle. Take advantage He's of He's not referencing numbers. All right. I hope I Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, our oh, closing oh. thoughts. You know, that was your first reaction, Alec. I think you and Dave would make a great, you know, duo on blunt biohacking me. Me, like, you know, scooting you guys around, I think would be right. very entertaining. Overall, like my thoughts on that video is there's a couple things that were blatantly wrong. Other wrong. things where you're nitpicking the direct yes. vocabulary he's using where I could be like yes. playing on his side like look like anti-inflammatory. It's still like lowering the inflammation in the joints from the water retention, but it's still an effect. Yeah. Like I, I could argue with that, but... The, the thing he said about Deccan women versus, you know, I know, like you know, that he recommends blasting Primo and VAR. That's kind of yeah. not added up. And I know in the medical literature, they use Deca with women all the time. So yep. that, that wouldn't really make sense with his hypothesis of like, this is a very anabolic compound that's not androgenic. So I agree well, on let me, those let me interject. Mm -hmm. Uh So... Yeah, the thing is that I'm nitpicking because this is a video where, you know, we're just winging this. Like, he has, he's in his studio, he has, you know, probably a concept written or something, and this is, and he's been in the industry for, like, what, 20 years or more, so, like, he's I would expect everything to be... Guru. Yeah, so, like, I would expect everything to be laid out as, as it should be, you know, that's just my uh, expectation, you know, so, and also regarding the anti-inflammatory effect, like, the, you have to specifically, uh, you, you have to specify what you're meaning by that, because if you just say anti-inflammatory, that would basically uh, uh, tail it to, uh, uh, tie, it, tie it to, like, uh, aspirin or ibuprofen, you know, so it's it's not the same mechanism. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but also th there are there were a lot of, a lot of things that were just uh, basically uh, statements that were opposing each other and made no sense. But um, you know, I still like Dave. You know, he's he's one of the OGs. Yeah, we we, we respect Dave one hundred percent, and RX Muscle is in the niche hardcore, you know, hardcore bodybuilding content, but. I feel like anyone's yeah. open for a chirp, and Alec is here to, you know, take over as the king of Macedonia. So, I'm just letting him pick and choose his battles because, eventually, we're gonna get some guests on Blunt Biohacking, and they're gonna have nowhere to hide from Alec's brain, and I'm just gonna be sitting there front seat, <laughs> cracking my ass off, trying to trying to reel both of them in. So, you guys really gotta check out Blunt yeah. Biohacking if you made it this far. Once we get to a thousand subscribers. I'm going to be picking which soul I want to sacrifice to Alex's brain each week. <laughs> now, dude, I'm going to pick I'm going to pick the dudes with the biggest egos when they come to like the guru side and just throw them in wait, there. Wait, if Listen, if, if uh, I, when I talked with Derek for, you know, pointers about this, he specifically said that if I am, you know, more uh, hostile or, you know, more like getting to debates like that more aggressively, then people are not going to come. And I understand that, you know, uh, so it's not necessarily battling or, you know, stroking each other's egos. It's just, you know, having a, an interesting discussion and, you know, giving away information. So like 
I can be wrong on shit, you know, which is fun for me. Like I, I, I would learn something. So it non, it's not necessarily to you know flex on people. It's just to have fun and entertain the the subscribers. Yeah, I, I guess that's kind of a miswording, but not really considering the egos that will enter oh, yeah. the podcast, right? If if, if we're all True. sigma, yeah. if we're all sigma based and. Everyone's like, you know, I'm not the smartest in the room, but here's my opinion. Then we're gonna have civil discussions. Yeah. But if there's someone shouting on their high horse some misinformation or sticking with a theory that's just bro science and doesn't make no sense, I don't see Alec being right. too cushy cushy yeah. about pointing yeah, that out no. in my in my best. And like as the podcast yeah. blows up, right, they're gonna have to come on the podcast and prove their points. So I agree with Derek, like definitely be the nicer stance, but if we get the podcast up to enough clout, then, you know, the people will force you on to deal with yeah, yeah, yeah. coming out. My my point was it's more so a discussion rather than right. debate club. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not it's 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 not it's not war and things like that because there are people that um they do that for cloud and they actually like go after other people even on a personal level which is stupid in my opinion you know it's unwarranted there's a lot to talk about to discuss like we're in the same industry we do the same thing it's 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 basically in everybody's best interest and by bringing up a debated point you get to see two angles and you, the audience, can exactly. decide which, you know, is Alec right? Is the guest right? Is Russo's stupid point in the middle, like, kind of the middle ground? So, we're, we're just trying to, like, not be, like, too cushy, right? You know, we're, trying, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're, yeah. we're not trying to, like, fucking destroy someone if they come on our podcast. But yeah. we're not at the same time just yeah. going to sit there and choke on their dick for them. Oh, no. On our podcast. no, no. It's going to be, it's called Blunt Biohacking for a reason. So, I hope you guys for enjoyed reason. this video and i'll see you guys in my next one